Talo falava malo lava langi ma manisu kumawa what's up uh, my name is uh, Matthew Salaku born and bred in Mangne South Auckland here in New Zealand Aotearoa uh, put into piano lessons very early on uh, and that was to play for church so like many Pacific Island musicians out these ways we grew up in the church making music uh, those skills translated across to uh, music production doing a lot of sampling originally started off just in music production pr uh, producing for various artists here in New Zealand uh, and that's expanded into more avant-garde sound design and composition for a wide range of industries yeah every day is a, is a dream doing what I love and it's really exciting times that, that we're in right now Two of the biggest influences on my music has been the culture around my family, being a New Zealand born Samoan and the ecosystems and communities that we exist in, and also the hip hop communities. Hip hop music has always been a voice of the streets, a voice for the unheard. You know, I have always viewed it being so foundational to my career. Doesn't matter what industry I'm in, what genre I'm in, but that responsibility of reporting. Um, to the world, you know, what those who don't have a voice um, had to say. And, you know, that's always been quite integral in, in, in my music. And then on the cultural side, growing up, you know, in a Samoan community, which has been, you know, from a very young age, very conservative, which was at, at odds with a lot of the music we grew up. But there was this um, aspect of service to the community. You know, I'm, I'm always making sure that whatever I, I gather information on whatever inspires me or I learn from that I disseminate that amongst the village uh, and then also making sure that I provide as a hip-hop influenced artist producer um, that that counterweight to that counterbalance to a lot of the the mainstream perspectives that are put out there. Yeah um, one of the biggest ones I think that we're watching before our very eyes is around um, financial systems. As a creative growing up here, you know, I've always wondered, you know, how so much of our creativity was, you know, applied funding and it didn't matter which industry I was in, there were all these, these systems that we inherit. And it feels like because of this very fascinating time we're in, we were you know, migrating from an analog world to a digital world because of COVID, which has just sped things right up. It's um, put a lot of transparency out there on the various systems. And here in Aotearoa, uh, behind the scenes, me and my wife are quite heavy in, in, in the industries here. You know, there is a lot of reckoning going on in terms of how power and governance and financial systems are um, set up and who they benefit and who has equity in in these systems, you know, that's a massive thing that I'm paying attention to. And I guess as a music producer, you know, I started off making music on um, cassette tapes, you know, that's how we made music. And that was eventually turned into digital computers where, you know, the whole thing changed. And we went from going to the local CD store to, to Spotify has everything in the world. So, you know, that's different to the way music was made in the seventies and the forties on phonographs and everything. And so, you know, music has always been a reflection of the technology of the time. And because we are going through such a massive technological overhaul because of decentralization through the blockchain, um, to me, that's foundational to, you know, not only the greater good in society, but at a more individual level for myself as an artist, it's really exciting because it's the next phase of music and creative production. Sustainability is obviously tied into that. Um, you know, sick of this narrative that, you know, artists have to be struggling. I've always viewed funding as the icing on the cake and not the cake. And I'd hate to be one of these artists that are just viewing handouts from wherever as the cake. Um, so it's about finding opportunities in this new ecosystem that we find ourselves in digitally to create sustainable ways of following up our passions and creating the things that um, we want to see out in the world. I grew up kind of making music in the four walls of a studio um, that, you know, you had designated spaces that you created music and sound within. For the last decade, I've just kind of collapsed the walls of those studio and just viewed the whole world as the studio. So the ability to go out with microphones and um, capture found sound and use that as the foundation of 
of music and soundscapes. So that's absolutely not what you would classify as you know, mainstream music and so forth. I do the radio imaging stings that play every four minutes on Pacific Radio here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And these play every, you know, every four minutes for the last decade. And, you know, people don't know that when they're hearing these jingles, I've actually embedded found sound samples from very special spaces from around the Pacific that I've captured in my, in my travels. And I've also taken archival, the earliest known recordings in the Pacific and woven them into these sounds that the community are getting hit with every four minutes. It's just fascinating to me to you know, incorporate real world frequencies back out into the world. You know, it's irrespective of whether people think, you know, understand it or not, are aware of it or not. It's just, I believe in the ability of music and the arrangement of frequencies to be able to, at a very powerful level, to be able to, to make change and impact the world. Like, you know, in, in Maori culture here, like when a baby's sick, you know, they have this um, instrument, like a, a string with the whirring thing, and you put that over the baby's chest and it dislodges um, any phlegm when they've got a cough and so forth. And that's just bass frequency vibrations and so forth. And so for me, if I'm able to, you know, make an inspirational song and kind of use just whatever bass preset sound comes from the Logic sound pack that the Apple engineers in California came up with, or take like the sound from Falea Lupo, which is where the spirits depart, um, from Savai and Samoa and turn that, put it in, sample that and create a bass frequency out of that and blast that out. I know which one I'd rather prefer to have in my music because I know at a very spiritual, cultural, sonic level that that's more meaningful to me and hopefully anybody that um, takes the time out to take an interest in my music. I'm so grateful for all the artists out there from not only the music disciplines, but all disciplines that are um, being able to create what they really are the reasons why I've been blessed and fortunate to have a career in music. Like I started off as just a kid in my room making beats like on cassette tapes. You know, I had a lot of people from outside of the hip hop world who who dared break their echo chambers by reaching out to me and saying that thing you're doing there, can you come do it in this space here? You know, each and every time I come back to the music space, the sonic space, I've got these new strands that I'm able to weave into music. So collaborations are absolutely a critical part um, of, you know, my growth. And I think that in, a, in and of itself is a metaphor for a, a, a bigger lesson is that we need to break our echo, echo chambers. Like if I had only just stayed keeping it real, keeping it hood and all of that, like, yeah, cool. I, you know, I've got respect in the hood, but... That's not all I ever want to be known for. And I don't want that to be the parameters in which I'm measured. And I want to be my best, most expressive, most complete version of myself. No, and I can only be exposed to that by, by having influence around me and people that are willing to step outside of their comfort circles to embrace the things that I know. That's why I, I am anonymous. I just take my identities from all these spaces and I just try to create um, a version of myself that makes me feel complete as an artist because we're always trying to pursue that unscratched itch of what you don't know. The, the spaces I grew up in were just, you had to become a different, I had to become a different version of myself and pretend to exist in each of these spaces. So, you know, I, I, I do come from that space and 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 I'm not trying to hide you from you and I'm not going to try to hide you from you, but I will take the best that, that I've learned from these spaces and just be me and just serve through being me. And so that's, I guess, at the core of, of my identity now, you know, being anonymous is, um, was due to that, you know, lack of identity or that... Um, just so confused growing up in a world where, you know, as a someone born New Zealander going between classical spaces and hood gangster spaces and broke places to millionaire spaces and just trying to figure it all out. It's just like, okay, I don't need to make sense of it all. I just need to take the best and, and, and invest in the upside of all these different spaces and just bring them together in, in whatever I create for whichever industry I'm in.